We as human beings have hands. Ah! That shouldn't really come as much of a surprise to most of us. But one of the big challenges when trying to design a VR game is trying to actually give our player hands and not just hands, but also add in animations so our hands can actually move from a grip to a finger gun to a thumbs up or any other variation that you may want to add in. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up some very simple animations as well as attach a simple skeletal mesh hand to your own motion controller. So that way you're able to actually feel as though you belong in a virtual space. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how this works. So as you can see here, I have hands for each of my motion controllers. I did leave the motion controller um, mesh on so that way you can see it's roughly in the correct location. But if you want to go ahead and disable that, you can go ahead and just disable that uh, that mesh for the motion controllers. Now for each of these, these each have animation, so I can go ahead and on either one hit the grip, and you can see that our hands actually do grip themselves. And if I go ahead and press trigger, my hand is actually going to go ahead and point as well. And it, it's a pretty smooth transition between each of these as well. Now each of these are just simply static uh, animations. You know, there's nothing going on here. However, if you want, you can use a blend space if you want to use like different types of grabs, for example. Every time you grab a different object, um, then it initiates a different kind of grab. Um, for example, pistol, the index finger is a little bit further out. Um, if you're holding something that's a little bit bigger, like a door handle, then maybe the grip is a little bit wider and not so much of a fist like you see here. Um, so on and so forth. Or you can have just some sort of natural movement um, if you want some kind of idle animation or something like that. There's a lot of different options you can do for something like this. Um, so I'm going to go and show you guys how you can go and set this up so your hand can go ahead and swap between different animations and all that kind of stuff. So with that, let's go and jump right into it. Before we get started on our animation, let's first start by attaching our skeletal mesh hands to our motion controller. This is actually pretty simple. To do this, we simply want to go ahead and open up our VR pawn or whatever other VR character we may be using. Navigate over to where our motion controllers are, and to each of our motion controllers, we want to go ahead and attach a skeletal mesh. As we're adding this in, I'm also going to go ahead and rename these skeletal mesh components. That way, it makes a little bit more sense for each of our motion controllers. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in the skeletal mesh hands that I'm going to be using. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Handy Hands Pack, VR Hands Mega Pack, which I'll have linked in the description if you want to go and check this out for yourself. Once you have both of these in, next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and work on making sure these are oriented correctly. For example, our left hand is probably not going to be set up correctly. It's going to look like a right hand attached on our left hand. To fix this, we can simply go into our scale and invert one of the scale axes. For this example, I only need to set our Y to negative one rather than one in order to flip our hand around so that way it actually looks like a left hand. In addition to this, I'm also going to go ahead and rotate this that way it's oriented a little bit more accurately to what I would expect in a real world scenario. So that way it's a little bit more accurate to what my hand is actually positioned at. And I'm also going to go ahead and relocate our hands by moving it down a little bit so that way it's also a little bit more accurate positionally. Once this is, all, this is all done, next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and set up our animation. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and head over to the skeletal mesh hands that I am using for this example. And in here, I'll first wanna make sure that I have a few animations for each of the positions that I want my hand to be in. In this case, I have three different positions. I have a simple five finger open hand. I also have a fist, and then I also have a one finger, which is going to act as our pointer finger for this scenario. Once 
Once you have whatever animations that you want to use for your hand positions, next thing we need to do is we need to create an animation blueprint. In our animation blueprint, we're going to need something called a state machine. We can add this in by simply right clicking and clicking add new state machine. This state machine is going to go directly into our output pose in our uh, animation graph. Once we've made this state machine, next thing we need to do is we need to open this up where you can actually set up all of our animations. To do this, you can simply double click on that state machine and it'll bring you right into it. Once in the state machine, we're now ready to go ahead and start adding in our animations and how we want our hands to swap between animations. To do this, we're going to go ahead and drag off the entry node that you see here and we're going to create a new state. For this example, I'm going to call our first state default and once we have this state created, I'm going to go ahead and double click this state. Now, this state will actually determine what our hand should be doing in this specific position. In this case, I want it to simply keep its hand open since this is going to be the default state where our hand isn't doing anything. It's not grabbing anything, it's not pointing at anything, it's not finger gunning anything, it's not doing anything. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and get our five finger animation that I have here. I'm going to go ahead and drag this and drop this into the result for our default state. Once this is done, we can go and return back to our state machine by clicking the new state machine uh, icon that you can find up here at the top of the screen. Once back here on the state machine, I'm going to go ahead and create the other two states that we're going to need by simply right clicking and creating a new state. These states are going to be for the grip or fist animation, and then I'm also going to create one for our one finger or pointer finger animation as well. When, once we have all of our states in place, next thing we need to do is we need to determine how we want to go from one state to the next. In order to do this, we first need to do something before we do anything more to our state machine. We're going to need to add in an integer. This integer is going to help us determine what state our hand is currently in, so that way we can determine which animation our hand should currently be playing. Now as a quick side note, this may not always be the correct way of doing things. In all honesty, it's usually a lot better to create something like an enum so that way we're able to easily determine which animation should be playing. It also makes it a little bit more easily readable. However, for this example, an integer works just fine. And since we're only using three simple states, this actually is just a very simple and easy solution that we can easily implement and we can just make sure that everything's working the way that we would expect it to. Once this is done, next we need to actually go ahead and set up how we want our animations to go ahead and transition from one to the next. To do this, let's start with the default and grip. I'm going to go ahead and drag from default to grip. This should create an arrow that goes from default to grip, and it should also give us a new icon that we can double click on here. This icon helps us, de helps us determine what should be the case in order for us to transition from default to grip. So for this example, I wanna go ahead and grab that integer and when it's equal to one, then we want this to go ahead and transition into that grip state. So I'm going to go ahead and check to see if it's equal to one, then take the Boolean and go ahead and pass that into our output. And it's as simple as that. Now we're able to actually go from our default five finger open state to a grip state. Now we need to go ahead and figure out a way to transition back. And this is also quite simple to do as well. Again, we're going to want to go ahead and drag an arrow from the grip state down to our default, except in this case, once we double click on that transition, we want to check to see if the state is equal to zero and not one. And it's as simple as that. Now we have a very simple way to transition from the default five finger state to the grip state, as well as back the other way around from the grip state to the open finger state. Now we need to add in the pointer finger into this. You can see here as we're going through, we're doing this in the same way that we did between the default and the grip. 
To do this, we're simply going to add in an arrow going from one to the next, and then we're going to determine what state we want to actually be transitioning. For example, when we're going from default to pointer, we want to check to make sure state is equal to two. And when we're going back, we want to make sure state is equal to zero. Same between our grip and our point. When we're transitioning from grip to point, we want to check to see if our state is equal to two. And when we're transitioning back from pointer to grip, we want to check to see if state is equal to one. And congratulations, assuming everything is correct, our state machine should now be correctly set up. We can actually test this as well right here in editor. In order to do this, in the bottom right, you should have a section where you can modify the integer and see what that integer is going to do on our animation. For example, in the bottom right, I have this integer called state. By default, it's at zero, which means that our hand is in its open position. If we set it to one, it should transition into a grip state. And if we switch it to two, then it should transition into its pointer state, and so on and so forth. Assuming everything is correct, we can now go ahead and return back into our VR pawn. And I'm going to click on both of our skeletal meshes and make sure that they have this new animation blueprint that we just created. By default, this animation graph for me is called uh, mannequin hand underscore right underscore element or uh, underscore skeleton underscore anim blueprint. Quite a long name and obviously not that great. Once we have our animation blueprint set, we can now go and jump into the event graph set where you can actually modify this state. In the event graph, first thing we want to do is in begin play, we want to go ahead and store the anim instance for each our left and our right hand. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and get the anim instance. I'm going to cast to the mannequin hand underscore right underscore skeleton underscore anim blueprint. Quite a long name, I know. And then I'm going to go ahead and store that variable so that we can use it whenever we, we want to change our state without having to do this whole cast like I just did here. And we're going to do that for both our left and our right hand. Once we're ready to set that state, we can go ahead and grab those variables that we just stored that store our in an instance. And in those, we can set the state. For this example, on grip, pressed, I'm going to go ahead and set our state to one for each our left and right hand. And then on release, we're going to go ahead and set that state back to zero. So it'll transition back into our five finger open hand. For pointer finger, on the other hand, I'm going to keep this quite simple as well. I'm going to use the trigger in order to trigger our pointer finger. Again, on press, we're going to set the state equal to two, and on release, we're going to set our state back equal to zero. And that's it. Assuming you've done everything correctly, you should now have three different positions that your hand can move between, and it should look pretty smooth as well. It should be able to quite smoothly transition from a closed hand, open hand, pointer finger, so on and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.